We've looked at how much translations contribute to the entropy of a system. Let's look at how much the rotational degrees of freedom contribute to the entropy. Starting again with our expression for the entropy in terms of the partition function, and looking at the partition function for rotations, we can develop an expression for the entropy of rotations. It's customary to define a rotational temperature, theta rotations, as the rotational constant divided by the Boltzmann constant. Using this definition, the rotational partition function simplifies to the temperature divided by the rotational temperature. Again, taking the natural log of the partition function, we find that the natural log of Q rotation is natural log of T minus the natural log of the rotational temperature, which is characteristic for each molecule. And so the derivative of the natural log of the rotational partition function with respect to temperature at constant n and v is simply equal to 1 over the temperature. Making these substitutions into our equation for the entropy leads to the rotational entropy is equal to k Boltzmann times the natural log of t minus the natural log of theta rotations plus k Boltzmann t times 1 over t or the rotational entropy per molecule is k Boltzmann times the natural log of t over theta rotation plus 1. If we want the rotational entropy per mole, then we need to replace the Boltzmann constant with the gas constant R. So our final equation for the rotational entropy is given by the gas constant times the quantity 1 plus the natural log of T divided by the rotational temperature. The rotational temperature, theta rotation, gives us a cutoff for when we're in the high temperature and low temperature limits because if theta rotation is approximately equal to T, then the rotational partition function will be equal to 1 because it's the ratio of the temperature to the rotational temperature. If the rotational partition function is equal to 1, then we have essentially only the ground state populated. And thus, rotations are um, not accessible at these temperatures. However, if the rotational temperature is much less than the temperature of the system, then our rotational partition function gets large and rotations contribute to the overall degrees of freedom of the system. For diatomics, rotational temperatures are typically on the order of 0.1 Kelvin to about 100 Kelvin. And so we can see that at normal temperatures, room temperature and above, 298 and above, that the rotational temperature is less than the temperature, and so rotations contribute a large amount to the degrees of freedom of the system. So let's look again at our nitrogen molecule for which the rotational temperature is equal to 2.9 Kelvin. If we make that substitution into our expression for the entropy, we can calculate that the rotational entropy per mole for the nitrogen molecule is equal to about 47 joules per mole Kelvin. So if we couple that with the translational 
entropy that we calculated previously, then we can see that they add up to 197 joules per mole Kelvin. Remember that our experimentally determined standard molar entropy for nitrogen was equal to 191 joules per mole Kelvin. So that translations plus rotations account for 100% of the experimental entropy. This implies that vibrations do not contribute to the overall entropy of the system.